I studied filmmaking in the U.S. during the 70s. Recently, I've been doing talk shows on the voiceless dissidents, those that deserve to be heard but are silenced by the corporate media. The Treasury Department of the present Trump administration sanctioned me and my colleagues. I must have harassed them. We'll continue the show right here from my home. I am Nadir Talib Zadeh on Nadir's show. Greetings. Our next guest is a former counterterrorism specialist and military intelligence officer of the U.S. Central Intelligence Agency. He is also a prolific columnist and television commentator. He's especially controversial for the many articles he's written concerning the influence of Israel within the U.S. Philip Giraldi is a former CIA counterterrorism specialist and military intelligence officer. He holds a BA with honors from the University of Chicago and an MA and PhD in modern history from the University of London. In addition to TAC, where he's been a contributing editor for nine years, he writes for the American Free Press, the UNZ Review, the Strategic Culture, and the American Herald Tribune. Philip Giraldi is a recognized authority on international security and counterterrorism issues. Since 1992, Giraldi has been engaged in security consulting for a number of Fortune 500 corporate clients. He also speaks Spanish, Italian, German, and Turkish. He served 20 years overseas in Turkey, Italy, Germany, and Spain. He was the CIA chief of base for the Barcelona Olympics in 1992 and was one of the first Americans to enter Afghanistan in December 2001. Philip Giraldi is executive director of the Council for the National Interest, a Washington-based advocacy group that seeks to encourage and promote a U.S. foreign policy in the Middle East that is consistent with American values and interests. His recent articles on the case of Israel spying in the U.S. became controversial in the media. Okay, uh, Mr. Gerald, thank you so much. Let me begin with something a little bit more spontaneous. I'll go back to what you've been focusing on recently about the Israeli influence within the U.S., in which most Americans are not aware of the intensity of this influence. Uh, the neocons did not exist in the 70s. They came into being in the mid-80s on when the conflict with Iran uh, the Islamic Republic and uh, after the hostage crisis began. And they have picked up steam and they're all over the place. You're one of the people who has been blowing the whistle about the intensity of their presence. You have had articles on Epstein. You had articles on Christian Zionism. So this is my first question is about why the Americans need to be warned about the intensity of the presence of the Israelis in various ways, how they have infiltrated the U.S.? Well, the, the simple answer is that Americans have to be warned about um, the threat that is posed by this because um, the power of um, Israel and its supporters in the United States is such that it is leading the United States into wars that uh, do not have to be fought. And uh, Iran is uh, one of the best examples of, of this push for a war that is unnecessary. Uh, so the uh, neocons and, and the Israel lobby in the United States, what they do is they manufacture, they fabricate a threat coming from Iran. They claim that Iran is threatening the United States. This, of course, is, is, is complete fiction and uh, has always been complete fiction. So the real danger is that these people are so powerful 
and are so hidden within the government infrastructure that they can make the United States go to war, kill our soldiers, kill your soldiers, kill civilians uh, for nothing whatsoever. You also focus recently uh, on the influence of the Christian Zionists. You have one article entitled Pandering to uh, Christian Zionism, uh, Trump's Outreach on Display in Washington. And I know about what happened with, uh, with this. Um, uh, they had this um, gathering in Washington uh, with Pence at the helm, five administration people there. If you can expand on how Christian Zionists have come to the fore, and they have a pretty uh, 60 million uh, voting bloc, which supports Trump. And what's, uh, and according to John Hagee, the, the super pastor, he says that there's never been someone more supportive of Israel and good for Israel than, than President Trump. Um, why this focus on Christian Zionists? Do you think the Americans are not aware of what's going on? Well, again, the Americans are not aware of, of what's going on. The, uh, uh, the Christian Zionists and their activities are not very well publicized, not very well understood by most Americans who are not Christian Zionists. Uh, the Christian Zionists are uh, basically people who have been manipulated uh, by the Israel lobby, by powerful Jews in America uh, to believe certain things to be true about Israel. And uh, as a result, these people uh, un un unswervingly support Israel no matter what Israel does. Now, again, uh, Mr. Trump, uh, th these people had their conference two weeks ago. Mr. Trump basically sent over all his uh, leading foreign policy people to, uh, to woo them, to say good things about Israel, to make sure that their votes continue to be online for Trump uh, next year. Anybody who analyzes politics in America realizes that Trump cannot win the presidency again without the Christian Zionists. So this is another insidious force operating in the United States on behalf of a foreign country. Let me read the second paragraph of your article, which is something I've also researched in the past. You say Christian Zionism is not a religion per se, but rather a set of beliefs based on interpretations of specific parts of the Bible, notably the, notably the book of Revelations and parts of Ezekiel, Daniel, and Isaiah, that has made the return of the Jews to the Holy Land a precondition for the second coming of Christ. Um, and this is where the thing gets uh, very serious, is it's a religious belief now to support Trump. Is that true? Uh, yeah, it's religious, but it's also cultural in that it... Uh, uh, basically, you don't find, for example, uh, too many Christian Zionist Catholics. It's, uh, it's in the fundamental Protestantism, and a lot of the thinking is based on what they call the Schofield Bible, which was written in the 19th century. It's a standard Bible, but what it includes is a lot of commentary uh, written by a gentleman named Schofield, and this commentary is what tells people that this is the meaning of, of books like uh, 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 Revelations. And the meaning of Revelations is that the Jews have to come back and there will be a second coming in which you will, you good Christian Zionist people will all rise up to heaven. So it's this kind of thinking, which is religious, it's cultural, it's, uh, it has a lot of aspects to it, uh, which, which motivates the people who vote and support Trump. Interestingly enough, um, both those prophets are buried in Iran, and they prophesied in Iran. Both Daniel is in Susa, Shush, and Ezekiel, the father of Daniel, is in Desfud. And the, both have shrines that are attended 24 hours a day by Muslims, and I believe others that would come there. Uh, and they, they, both these prophets that are in the Bible, and they're using that, the whole thing against Iran today, uh, took refuge in, in, in Iran during the era of Nebuchadnezzar, where the, where the king of Iran, Cyrus, came, came and delivered them out of this tyrant. And both lived and stayed and died in Iran 
Daniel, which is a famous shrine I've visited many, many times myself. I've prayed there. And then close by, about 40 miles to the east uh, of uh, Shush Susa is Ezekiel, the father. So it's interesting how things have been twisted today that Iran, who was a deliverer of what, at one time of the Jewish people, is now the tyrant and, and the threat. Well, this kind of argument is very convenient because, again, this fits in with depicting Iran as a threat against the United States. Because ultimately, let's face it, if, if America is to go to war with Iran or any other country, uh, there have to be a, a series of explanations of why this is taking place. And uh, we have seen nothing in the past 20 years but lies about the threats coming out of the Middle East. And many of these lies are being engineered by Israel and its friends. Uh, yeah, and in fact, uh, I have noted personally that uh, uh, the Jewish community in Iran uh, generally is, is basically uh, not interested in the United States attacking the country and does not support the, the, uh, the belief that's widespread in the West that these people are persecuted. Uh, Christians and, um, and Jews in Iran practice their religion with considerable freedom. Right, that's quite true. Um, now, coming to the point of um, the intimidation that are occurring in the Persian Gulf and teasing for a war. This is very tedious now uh, with uh, what happened in Gibraltar and recently in the Hormoz Straits with the British um, tanker. Um, what's your take on this and, and this continuous uh, uh, tick for tack and, and the, 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 the possibilities of uh, making this um, more explosive? Well, I think uh, it's very clear that the intention of John Bolton and others in the administration, Mike Pompeo, Secretary of State also, uh, is to provoke a war with, with Iran. And um, uh, they're doing it in a very awkward fashion, so much so that even the American press has noticed that the stories don't quite make sense. Uh, the uh, the uh, uh, story about the tankers being mined made no sense whatsoever and was denied even by the, the captains and crews of the, of the ships. Uh, the, the story about the U.S. drone not being over Iranian territory uh, uh, was disproved by the fact that the debris landed in Iran. And um, so, and, and, and then of course we have the incident with the um, uh, oil tanker in uh, Gibraltar, off Gibraltar. There was an interesting article today that came out by Gareth Porter, uh, which, which demolishes that story. It's, it, it makes very clear that there was, first of all, no legal pretext for seizing the tanker. And secondly, that the tanker was in Moroccan waters when it was seized by the British and the British claimed it was in their waters. So again, it's lie piled upon lie, piled upon lie to make a pretext for war. Uh, Mr. Geraldine, my next question is your article that came up today. Uh, it's Israel's agents of influence. I think this has always been a theme of, of what you've been talking about. Um, and you, you focus on Epstein, Jeffrey Epstein, who you, you, you say, and it's obvious from other sources, that he is a source of blackmailing a lot of elite Americans, and he's done it. Why, why did you suddenly start focusing on Jeffrey Epstein, and why do you think he's a threat to American security? Well, I, I did not know very much about Jeffrey Epstein before he was rearrested uh, for his crime of pedophilia. Uh, what I have discovered since then uh, is that, I, you know, I am a, you know, I am a former intelligence officer. Uh, and uh, what I have discovered since then is that his pattern is uh, perfectly uh, similar to the types of activity undertaken by intelligence organizations. Uh, this whole uh, setup whereby he had senior politicians and, and leading businessmen uh, coming by to his mansion and uh, having relations with uh, young girls and filming it is, uh, is suggests that this was something more than than just a pervert. 
Uh, and then there are other connections too. His, uh, uh, his woman friend is the daughter of Robert Maxwell, who is very well known to have been a Mossad spy in Britain. And uh, the, uh, his other business associate, uh, a Mr. Uh, Wexler from Ohio, um, also has been connected to Israeli intelligence, which I describe in my article. Uh, and and there is, there's considerably more information. So this man, uh, I would have to suspect, was working for Mossad and was blackmailing people for Mossad and uh, getting them to cooperate with him uh, on behalf of the Israeli government. Uh, okay, thank you so much. I'm going to move on to another character that is also in Hollywood. Arnon Milshan, and uh, a Hollywood producer, uh, and uh, we know that um, uh, he has a hand in many things, including uh, supporting Israel to, be, to have nuclear weapons in the 60s. Now, I interviewed the late uh, Michael Collins Piper in Washington in 2006, several times on his book, The Final Judgment, in which he details the documents of why Kennedy did not want Israel to have nuclear weapons and uh, because it would, it would tip the balance in the Middle East. This was uh, Kennedy's aim to stop it. And Milshan is one of those people who helped uh, get a lot of uh, equipment for Israel at that time. Uh, first of all, uh, I know that you, you didn't meet uh, Michael Collins Piper in person, but you've read his books and his articles. I want to focus a second on that period in which Israel was equipping itself with nuclear weapons, what it's accusing Iran of today, of, of uh, you know, acquiring nuclear weapons, which is against our religious creed, and we've announced it. But at that time, secretly he was doing it. One of those people that supported him at that time was this Hollywood producer, who, who later on became a Hollywood producer, and uh, that uh, Michael Collins Piper focused on. Uh, I, 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 when I interviewed him, I asked him about JFK, the movie, and he said, you know, one of the producers of that film was this character, Arnon Milchan, who wanted to get the, the other story out, which was, he believed, a false story. The real story was that Kennedy was prohibiting Israel to become equipped with a nuclear weapon. Can you comment on this a little bit? I don't think it's been talked about at all in the media. Uh, yes, I mean, it, it, uh, it is known that Kennedy was pressuring the Israelis uh, to abandon their nuclear program. He knew about it, uh, and he threatened to withdraw any U.S. support for Israel unless they abandoned the program. So this was very serious, and people have speculated even that the uh, killing of Kennedy could possibly be connected with this issue. And, I don't know whether that's true or false, but there has been speculation. So Kennedy very definitely was laying down the law on the Israelis. And, uh, but meanwhile, the Israelis had a secret, a clandestine program that they were running to get the necessary uh, equipment, which they could not get legally, to construct a nuclear weapon. They had a supplier from a, a, a Jewish-owned company in Pennsylvania who provided them with uranium, which would have been needed to construct the bomb. But the key element in, in, um, in making the bomb uh, was the triggers. And the triggers were something that were produced in California. And this uh, Arnon Milchan uh, actually corrupted uh, the owner of this company and illegally obtained uh, these triggers so Israel could construct nuclear weapons, which it did. And it's also interesting to note in the story that uh, Milchan's contact in the United States at the time was Benjamin Netanyahu. Um, for me, the interesting aspect of the story is that the FBI, CIA, have known about Milchan ever since this happened. They, uh, they detected what was going on. They knew about the, uh, the loss of the uranium in Pennsylvania. They knew about the, the triggers. And uh, yet Milchan has made a billions of dollars uh, coming to the United States, making movies, and nobody has ever even talked to him when he came in through the airport. Nobody from the FBI, nobody from the police. 
And, and it has also recently been learned that Milchan was not just doing um, weapons trading, we might call it, in the United States. Uh, he was doing it elsewhere, too, on behalf of the Israeli government. And uh, he was involved with the South African nuclear program and with the uh, testing of an Israeli nuclear weapon by the South Africans. So he was deeply into nuclear proliferation, which is a major uh, offense against U.S. policy. But nobody has ever taken this guy aside, taken away his visa, or even questioned him about what he's been doing. And, and this, this seems to be a pattern. Every, anyone who's serving that state gets away with just about everything where if an American normal citizen uh, got into that sort of a position, he would definitely be in much hotter waters. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the, uh, there had, the, the history of people who were actually prosecuted for spying for Israel, the list is so short, it's unbelievable. Uh, Jonathan Pollard is the one name that comes to mind. There have been others who were found to have spied for Israel, uh, but they uh, w were never actually imprisoned or did any time in jail. And uh, this is characteristic of a justice system which does not want to go after Israeli spies. If, if you talk to uh, FBI people who work in counterintelligence, they will tell you that there are lots of identified Israeli spies out there, but they're not allowed to go after them. They're not, the Justice Department will not prosecute them. Right. I would like to ask you, um, Mr. Geraldi, if there's a point that you think uh, my audience, which is now an international audience, not just the Iranian audience, should uh, be aware of right now about the tediousness of the times. Well, I think, uh, yes, I think the, uh, your international audience should be aware of the fact that there are many people like myself in the United States who are not accepting the arguments that are being made against Iran, against other countries in the Middle East like Syria, uh, that, that these arguments are largely motivated by a powerful domestic lobby. This lobby is so powerful that uh, all the organizations that support it act with total impunity. Uh, they don't register as foreign lobbies. Uh, they register, I believe it or not, as charities in many cases. Uh, so they are tax exempt, which means the taxpayer is supporting them. And we are aware of this. We are talking about it more and more, and it is becoming more and more an open issue. So, uh, so you can say, in a sense, the coming of President Trump uh, has not only divided America, but also raised the awareness of those who are willing to become aware. Yes, I think so. I mean, people are more concerned about war and peace now than they have been in the last 20 years. And I think the, the word Israel keeps coming up again and again as a motivating factor in terms of what we are seeing. Thank you so much, Mr. Geraldi. It was an honor to have you on the show and uh, uh, wishing the best uh, in everything. We hope to be in touch with you until we meet, inshallah, in Beirut. I hope so, too. I want to, I want to get together with you. Okay. Thank you. Take care. All right. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching the program. We are very proud to speak with Mr. Philip Giraldi. See you next time.